begin with his opening statement, and then we'll go ahead and take questions. All right. Um, looking back on uh, on the, the week against Georgia, um, thought um, very proud of, of our players and their ability to uh, compete and find a way to finish. Um, I thought uh, going into the game, uh, from a from a game plan perspective, I thought you know we saw about what we what we expected to uh, to get from from Georgia offensively. Certainly, their their mentality was to uh, to take some some shots downfield on on some younger younger guys as well and kind of test our, our secondary. I thought we handled that really well early on. Um, I thought uh, we we did a really nice job in the first half, guys. Uh, competed well, were in the right spots, uh, executed really well on third down, and then we were we were certainly able to create some takeaways um, and uh, and make their quarterback uncomfortable, which was uh, one of our keys to victory and something we knew we had to be able to do. It was going to be challenging, uh, as I told you last week, in order to get takeaways off of them, but that was certainly uh, a huge key to the game. Um, I thought. Uh, uh, you know, for us, we got 10 game changers, as I've talked to you before about those things, takeaways, sacks, three and outs, uh, and uh, we, I guess a safety would also uh, count into that as we had uh, this past week. We wanted to get eight plus, uh, uh, and we got 10 in the game, um, but, uh, but probably the thing that shows up the most uh, was our, our lack of ability to get off the field on fourth down. We had seven different times we did not get off the field on fourth down. They were seven of O. They were three of 15 on third down, and then and then were able to uh, to execute uh, on fourth down to keep drives alive. When you go up 30 to seven, um, you're playing a very different style game um, uh, from a defensive perspective. Now that this team essentially has four downs uh, to be able to get a first down, and so typically what they what they did uh, and what as what most teams would do, right? They're going to be way more aggressive on first or second down take more shots downfield, knowing that they're going to be in a go scenario on fourth down. And so it's one of the most challenging things to handle as a defense. Uh, it's, you know, it's even different than two minute uh, because you are now defending four downs um, and they have time. They can take their time. They can take those shots downfield. And I thought at times we handled it really well to get them to fourth down situations, which is hard enough as it is, uh, but we were not able to execute and get off the field. We needed one more stop, one more takeaway, uh, and, and then certainly, uh, you know, we needed to be able to clean up some of the big plays that, you know, really, if we get off the field on fourth down, some of those things don't happen in the first place. So I thought, uh, I thought for us, the coaching staff uh, did a good job making some of those adjustments. You can't play uh, in the second half in just straight zone coverage. If you go look at Carson Beck over his career, the dude, does a tremendous job of, of picking you apart in, in straight zone coverage. You've got to be able to mix up uh, man and zone. We did some of those things against him, but uh, but certainly I thought he did a really nice job in the second half uh, of, of hitting some uh, some explosives that uh, you know that, that certainly made the game closer than, than what we wanted uh, from a from a defensive perspective. So. Um, disappointed in a number of things that we did not finish well enough in the second half. Uh, very proud of, of the fight of our players. I thought, you know, you look at the fourth downs, you look at some of the takeaway opportunities that we missed on. When that happens over and over and again in a game, too many times you've seen a defense essentially fold um, and and uh, and give in. And I thought our guys continue to fight all the way until the very end when you know uh, a guy, uh, Xavier Brown, gets a uh, an interception. I thought, uh, you know, high praise for him. Um, to, to be able to stay in the fight. I thought it was a really great learning experience for some of our younger players. And, and you know, uh, Coach DeBoer mentioned this. We've all had experiences, uh, be it as coaches or players, whether we were here or transferred from another program, you've had experiences where you've had to push through adversity, but now we've done that together. Uh, and I think there's a certain level of team chemistry that comes from experiences like that that we certainly need to take moving forward. That being said, now as we go into uh, Vanderbilt, um, I think uh, this team is playing with a lot of energy. Um, you look at their sideline, you look at the, the level of, of uh, competitive attitude that, that those guys play with. I think you see that come from their quarterback. Um, the dude is, uh, 
is a is a real baller. I mean, he is he's physical, he's tough. You know, he uh, he makes the the non-traditional play uh, out on the field numerous times, um, and so he's going to uh, certainly be challenging for us when you look at an option style offense and the way their quarterback certainly navigates their offense. You can tell there's a confidence from the rest of his teammates that, that I think he breathes into their football team. You see it on the, on the sideline when you watch live copies, the defense feeds into it, the whole team is into it, and they play with a great, great bit of enthusiasm and chemistry. Um, and we've got to do a great job of going from a game that had a lot of attention and, and a lot of momentum swings uh, and found a way to win to do the same thing over and over again. Success, naturally, if you allow it, will breathe complacency into your program and you have to fight um, to be able to, uh, to, to to play to the standard week in, week out, and that's certainly going to be the challenge for us this week. Thank you, Coach. We'll start on the back right with Ryan. Yeah, Coach, that pick at the end for a freshman to do that, that's got to be a kind of a cool moment for you as a coach and maybe a lesson down the road. I asked Coach DeVore, I want to ask you, what does that carry over and your message to the team of staying the fight? Yeah, I think uh, I thought, you know, uh, Coach DeVore hit it right on the head with the players when, you know, we've all had experiences in football where we've had to navigate through adversity, but when you do it together, um, you know, you can now all draw from that common experience. And so for for a guy like Xavier Brown, who, you know, they, they took shots at him from the second play on, and really he navigated that really well. And honestly, a lot of the downfield throws, I thought we did a really nice job of the majority of the night. But when you have well over 20, I think it was 22 or 23 of them, they're going to connect on some. And they did against him early in the game, uh, or excuse me, in the second half of the game. Um, for him to stay locked into those moments and not be overwhelmed by the adversity, um, you know, one is the football game ultimately, right? And the, the confidence that, that that will draw, that he'll be able to draw upon for the rest of his career, the confidence that we'll be able to build off uh, from his teammates, right? Knowing that he can stay in the fight um, and find a way to win ultimately, I think is, is something that, you know, I told the defense, nobody in that room will ever forget that moment, you know what I mean? And, and certainly this season, we need to make sure that we rely back on that when adversity comes, which it, it most certainly will. Go to back to that for Steven. Coach Devontae Jacks had a takeaway also. What, what makes him stand out as a guy that quarterbacks don't like testing him because it's a good step up? Yeah, I mean, you know, Damani has been um, uh, a, a real quiet consistency in our program, uh, in, in our defense for the last four games. Um, I think uh, I think again the other night I think he maybe got one ball caught on him um, you know did a really good job at the point of attack um, I think from a from a, a downfield presence you know he's very consistent in his technique he's become a very physical player uh, which is exciting to see that was something that we really challenged him in the off season um, and his ability to uh, to go make plays on the ball and then when it, certainly in the run game or in the perimeter throw game I think he did a really nice job on that as well and then certainly uh, we brought out a, a pressure package um, that, uh, that that we uh, had been working on all off season and preparing um, and fortunately we're able to hold it uh, until we got into SEC play and um, you know the very first time we call it Damani does exactly what we expected to, to do in that situation when they threw the ball out on the perimeter and gets an interception. So awesome to see guys that, that practice um, at a high level and consistently um, be rewarded on game day. And that's, that's you, you can point to, there were multiple times we worked that exact concept that we thought that they were going to go to in driving the ball. And then, you know, you could pretty much almost pair a practice rep, multiple practice reps to exactly what happened in the game. That's, that's pretty cool. Go to Colin on the front left side. Obviously, you know, disguise has been a prominent part in, in your defense over the course of these first four games, but I mean, it seemed like you guys had a lot more design pressures and in, in getting to the backfield, getting to the quarterback. How do you feel like that worked and, and against Georgia and how, how it was that an addition? And then what do you see the role of pressure being uh, moving forward? Well, I think, um, I think when you when you face somebody uh, like Carson Beck that's so experienced, um, one of the things that, that we've always been able to hang our hat on as a defense is that we're going to show the skies. We're going to give him one pre-snap picture 
and then we're going to give him a di different picture post-snap. Sometimes we're going to give him a pre-snap picture, an immediate post-snap picture, and then switch that picture mid-play. And that's where we got a couple of things where you know you could tell um, we've got him a little bit off kilter and he threw us the ball a couple of times just simply because we're showing him one picture pre-snap, a different picture right at the snap, and then rotating to something else entirely as the play's going on. We were able to affect him a number of times. Pressure allows you right to be able to, to speed up the quarterback's tempo in the throw game. And so when you're doing some of those disguises, um, you know, if you have had pressure on the quarterback early on, it allows those disguises to work for you um, at a much higher rate. And so we were schematically committed to, to getting in the backfield and making sure that we, we made him uncomfortable early. I thought we were able to do that. Um, and then, you know, certainly it was able to, to kind of disrupt his timing. But I'll tell you this, I mean, I, I thought that kid, um, that young man rather, uh, did, did a tremendous job of continuing the fight. I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country um, uh, and, and, and showed his ability to fight uh, even through some of the adversity. And so I'm uh, very impressed by him. And they've got a very good football team. I thought, you know, Coach Smart um, did a really tremendous job of, of keeping his guys in the fight and, um, and, and certainly in, impressed with them overall as a team. Go to Katie, second row on the left. Defense leads the country in pass breakups at night on Saturday. And I guess some of those are in coverage. Some are just guys reading the quarterback's eyes and batting it down. But what makes this defense so good at that? Well, we, uh, you know, from a schematic standpoint, we play a lot of what we call vision style coverage. And even when we're playing man coverage, there are elements of vision that are based into some of our hook drops and hole droppers um, that we're able to read the eyes of the quarterback and react. And so when you can put your eyes on the quarterback, um, now you're not just defending people or grass, but you're defending the people in the grass that the quarterback wants to throw the ball to. We went to a more of a vision-oriented defense like in 2014. Um, my dad, uh, when he was a D coordinator at Ole Miss, got it from uh, Monty Kiffin, who my dad had GA'd four years ago uh, back in 1978. Um, him and uh, my dad GA'd for Lou Holtz and, and Monty Kiffin, so that relationship stayed all the way through the years. Um, and then in 2014, uh, we got kind of the Seattle Seahawks Legion of Boom. Back when they were Legion of Boom, they were the number one team in, in, uh, in, uh, in the NFL. They were taking the ball off of people more than anybody else, and they were playing with this vision style coverage. And so we got into doing those same things uh, in 2014 as a defense at, at Ole Miss. We became the number one scoring defense in the country, uh, number one in the country in interceptions. Uh, and really, we've never looked back since. The element of putting vision on the quarterback um, and a number of different concepts defensively, be it zone or even man, uh, has been an, has given us an opportunity to, to make more plays on the ball, as you're saying. Jump to Nick here in front right. Yeah, uh, Jaheim Otis is a guy that uh, we haven't seen to have as big of a role this season. I think he was past year's fourth in snaps uh, for defensive linemen, seventh this year. Like, what's kind of the decision, kind of how, how you've used him this year? I think, um, you know, I think Jaheim, obviously, coming from the offseason, uh, coming off of an injury, I think he's still finding and hitting his stride, working to hit his stride. Um, I think he's taking steps in the right direction. I think there's, there's growth uh, there, but certainly we want to continue to see him uh, uh, take steps in the right direction. And, um, I think uh, as he continues to take those steps, you know, he has really high potential and, and, and an opportunity to, to impact this team in a, in a large way. Right, we've got time for two more questions. Start with Chase on the left. How did you think Quay Rousseau played coming off an injury? And was he back to 100% as far as you know? Yeah, I don't know, uh, I, you know what percentage he would tell you that he was at. Um, I think you know Quay worked so hard over these last two weeks to get himself back to a position where he could contribute and help his team win the football game. Um, again, I, I cannot stress enough how uh, important and valuable Jeff Allen and his staff are to, uh, to our success. Um, they uh, you know, treat our players with great care um, and maximize the opportunity for them to, to create value for themselves on game day. Um, and, and so you know, for them, um, great in the communication, you know, what is what is Quay feeling, you know, what are the steps that we need to take to get him prepared to go play, and then even 
you know, really we weren't sure how many snaps we were going to get out of him or how far we were going to, to be able to push um, for him to be able to push himself uh, until you know really pregame and then once he got out there he was feeling good and so I think he ended up with 24 snaps on the game but you know I told the players uh, on Sunday think about all the work Quay put in these last two weeks to now get out on the field and then create a takeaway for our defense, you know, and get 24 snaps in the game. And so when players go through some of that, you know, that injury uh, adversity to be able to really push uh, to, to, to get through so that you can get back on the field on game day. Uh, one question with Tom again. You talked heading into this matchup about, like, limiting the production on easy access throws. How big was Xavier in, in making some of those stops in the perimeter yeah. and just wrapping up his, the ball carrier quickly? I thought for the majority of the night we did a really good job of that. Um, when when we didn't, it was because of you know fundamentally we weren't putting our eyes um, on on the quarterback and driving the ball. You know a lot of easy access throws are either you're denying that 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 access throw uh, by your alignment and your leverage, or you're denying it with vision. So when the quarterback goes to throw the ball out on the perimeter, you're able to break off the quarterback's vision. And a couple of times we didn't do a good enough job of that. But I thought particularly Xavier um, did a really nice job of, of defending the perimeter, uh, of holding um, the, the lateral leverage that you have to do in, in order to defend the, the perimeter screen game. And then really for the most part, I thought we tackled well the majority of the night. I think there were probably two key missed tackles in the game. Uh, both of them were for explosive plays and one for, for a touchdown, you know, Keon Sab. We miss a guy. They had us in a in a kind of an and go deal. Nice job on their part. We got a collision. The guy at the top of the route and probably can end it right then and there. But they're going to make plays too. When they make plays, we've got to be able to talk about limiting explosives and none for touchdowns. And so you've got to be able to get the guy on the ground and give us a chance to play great red zone defense in that situation. We didn't do it there. And then we had another one out on the perimeter uh, where uh, Red just didn't. Uh, uh, didn't drive the, the hitch route the way he needed to. And, and so those are things that uh, certainly uh, we've got to continue to work on and, and get better at. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Roll Tide.